Hi, and welcome to Manny's Making. So today, uh, you're going to get this really crazy compilation video of how to make this. So remember last week we made this bracelet, and we used one of the cabochons that we, you know, bead embroidered. You can barely see it on the back uh, here. And then we, I taught you how to do this peyote bracelet, and how to do the peyote loop, and then we used a cup button. Um, from Atomic Beads to put it all together to make this really sleek and wonderful bracelet. Well, I told you last week that I had another alternative, and this is a very different look. It's more modern. Um, it's not so masculine looking. It's a little, I don't know. It's still, I, all my stuff has a smack of masculine going on. I don't know what that is. I'm not into frou-frou too much. So this one, you have the beaded cabochon, and you can see the back of it. And it's just finished with different beads on the outside edge. I used, um, these are four, those are two, four millimeter, um, bronze fire polish. I'd have to look up which one it is. I'll put the, it under the show more button. And uh, please, if you want to see more videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. It's really important. Um, you know, especially subscribe. So that I can, um, you know, grow this channel. So I'm going to show you how to do uh, several things today. One, I'm going to show you how to make these squares. So this is what the square looks like. Now, it's uh, it's got dimension, and there's lots of other places that can show you how to do this. But I'm using them as part of my project, so I'm going to show you how I do them. Now, this is done with regular seed beads, but this black and bronze combination is impossible to see on screen. So we're going to do one with some white and pink delicates, just so you can learn the technique. And then once you understand how it goes, and practice a few and make them in different colors, um, and you can use them later for, just to give you an example, here's one I made in fun colors. And this, I have a set ready now that if I make a bracelet, and I use these colors sometimes in a bracelet, if I make a bracelet um, or some other thing, and I want to use this as my clasp, my toggle and loop, you know, um, then I have this already ready and I just have to attach it to my project. So they're never a bad thing to make. Okay, so teach you how to make the square. I'm going to teach you how to do a toggle clasp, a toggle to go for the, with a toggle clasp, um, and how to figure out how it fits on the actual square, if I can get the square to behave, how to figure out the sizing of it so that you don't make one too small or too big, and how you can extend it if you need to. And then I'm going to teach you how to do this square um, stitch strip that we connect together to make this. Um, now, you could definitely put this together with the fire polish between these units and make it look more feminine rather than the strips across. Um, you know, whatever you like. Again, your, it's your imagination. So I'm just going to, you're going to learn three new techniques today. You're going to learn square stitch. You're going to learn how to make a dimensional peyote and how to make a toggle. Um, and the dimensional peyote square can be turned into the, the other part of the clasp set. Okay. So I'm going to show them in different colors. I'm going to use the pink and white today. Um, Delicas. I got them here at the top. I mean, I can't even pull my mat down. I, finally secured it pink and white at the top. So I'm going to use those colors and I'm going to have videos on how to make each of those things. They're going to be part of this video. So you'll see me change to the other one and we'll do that to go from there. And I'll show you how I put this all together. And I'm looking forward to having fun with you today. Get out your pen and paper and your thinking cap and go for it. Okay, so in this part I'm going to show you how to make one of these squares this is, as I was explaining, you know, you need several of these squares um, to make this particular uh, way of finishing this bracelet. So, this is done with peyote and um, herringbone. There's herringbone in the corner and peyote in the rest. So, I'm going to show you how to do this, and I'm going to use different beads. I'm going to use some nice, bright, uh, cream-colored and some, I think they're purple antique rose. Um, beads so that they'll be easy to see on this nice green background and um, then you can see them easily. So I'm going to need some six pound fire line um, and I'm going to use crystal in this case because it's light but when you do it with the beads um, with the one that I did here I did it with the, the 11 black seed beads and the uh, 
bronze seed beads in the corners. And this one we're going to do it the other way. So I'm just grabbing a big uh, spool, a big spool at arm's length. Okay, and I'm going to thread my needle. Okay, so then my needle's threaded and I'm ready to go. I have a size 10 beading needle. And um, the two colors I'm using for this example, in case you want to do the exact same colors, are uh, bis uh, Bisque White Delica and it's 11 -0. and then I'm also using a dyed OP Antique Rose Delica so those are the two that I'm using and I'm going to use the cream as the main color and the um, corner color is going to be the rose so you're going to start by putting on um, you don't necessarily need a stop bead because I'm going to be uh, knotting it when I get there so you're going to put seven of your Delica beads on um, of your main color. So that's five, six, seven, and then you're going to put seven, uh, one of the rows, and you're going to do that four times. So three, four, five, six, seven, and one rows. I'm just going to move this down just a little bit. Just double checking my count because I want to make sure I get it right. So that's set, set number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one rows. Okay, and this is really important. Um, once you get them all on your thread, take a second and just double count to make sure that you have, you know, seven on each of each of the main color. So you can do these in any color and they make great pe peyote toggles um, like a clasp and toggle so you can make a square and then I'm going to teach you also how to make the toggle and then you can put them together. So to help with the focus I'm going to move the beads out of the way now and I'm just going to move them off to the side here so they're not catching the focus all the time and we're going to go from there. I'm going to pull these down to the end of my, pull them down to the end, and I'm going to leave just a couple of inches, uh, three inches is more than enough for me to tie a knot comfortably, and I'm going to bring them around. Now, you can bring them through if you want again, um, but I find this will end up being the inside row that you're going to have to come back down to, and I find if I do them too tight at this point, it becomes an issue, so let me just move some of this other stuff I can still see in the focus. Okay, so we'll bring it in a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to just make a knot overhand knot. It's going to be a square knot eventually. And I'm being careful. I'm just holding those other beads out of the way so that I don't get them caught in the knot. Okay, so I do the one way. And then I have to go. So that was the one direction. And you got to go the other direction. So you have to do left over right and then right over left. So this is left over right. I already did right over left. And I always have trouble with this one more than the other one. There we go. And excuse me up front, my hands are not working as well as they could today. So this is what you end up having. It make it makes a loop that, and then you know you've got it the right way. Okay. So I'm tightening it. I'm gonna watch the beads. I'm tightening it down. I don't want it to catch any beads out. And then I want to just loosen it off just a smidge. I want to have a little bit of space, but I don't want to have a ton of space. So making sure my knot's tight. It's not yet. There we go. Tighten it. Now this is too tight. Um, you see how this is sort of, it's pretty stiff. I want it just a little loose, so I'm going to just loosen it off just a little bit. So now it's nice and floppy. And that'll help me when I get going, okay? So my knot's right here, and it's right by my accent bead. So I'm going to come through the accent bead, and I'm going to come through the f first Delica past that. So that's where your needle's going to go to start. I'm going to pull that through. So I have a little bit of space here. So I'm going to tighten it just a smidge more. 
it's a little bit too loose. So getting that fine where it's loose and there's some space there. See how there's some space between the beads, but it's not too tight. It will tighten up as you go, so don't worry about it too much. I'm going to hold on to my tail. So now this is peyote. So I'm going to pick up a stitch, pick up a bead on my needle. I'm going to skip this next bead. So the thread's coming out of here. I'm going to skip this next bead, and I'm going to go into the following bead. Just like that. And I'm going to put it, bring it down. And they're going to sit beside each other like that. And then I'm going to pick up my next bead, and I'm going to go this bead, and I'm going to go through the following bead, and I'm going to pull, and they're going to lay beside each other like that. So this is what you have so far. Try not to keep on screen here. And then you're going to go through the last one before your, your last one before your um, contrast bead. It's going to be in the corner, and I'm getting my tail caught up there, and I'm going to pull it down. So I have three sticky outies I've made, okay? I'm just tightening them up a little bit. Now this first round is the hardest round, just know that, okay? So then I'm going to pick up two to bridge across this corner, okay? So I have two on my needle, like this, and I'm going to go through the very next con uh, main color bead. So the only time I'm going to use the contrast is when I'm in a corner, and it's going to change a little bit. So I have the two there, and now I'm going to peyote again from till the next corner. So I, I'm not coming out of this first bead, I'm going to skip the second bead, I'm going to go into the third bead, and back out again. And I usually hold my hand, my fingers like that, just to sort of give it a little bit of tension, and it helps to hold it. And then I move it around a little bit. So I'm coming out of this bead, I'm going to skip this bead, and I'm going into the next bead. So that's, I'm going into bead five, I believe. Yes. Because you have seven beads on the side. And I'm going to do this again. So you end up with three sticky outies again. And now I need two more of my contrast beads, because I'm coming across the corner. And these are going to be herring bones, so I want to make sure that they're sitting in there nice and um, that they're sitting right in that little slot. Okay. Now I'm going to continue to do this all the way around, and I'll show you how to step up when we get to the end. Okay, so I'm ready to do my last um, two beads on this row, and it's, it happens to be in a corner. So as you can see, I've come around, and I've got you know the two, the two, the two. Um, this one isn't sitting quite right, but when I pull tight, it will. And so I want to come into that very first bead that I skipped past when I first started. On the other side of that pink bead, I have two of my contrasting color on my needle. I'm going to skip that first one, and I'm going to come in through that one, and then through the first sticky outie on the next row, the, the row we just added. So I'm pulling tight. So you have sort of a square starting. Can you see this? You have sort of a square t starting. Kind of cool, right? All right, so and I'm going to peyote again. And again, it's just I'm coming around. And I'm just holding it close to the edge of my beads. It makes it easier for me to see, see the sticky outies, especially as you get to be older. And sticky outies don't show up as much in your visual. And three. Now this time, when I get to the corner, I have two beads here. I only want to go through one of the two beads, just one of the two pink beads. Okay, my contrast color. And I'm just bringing it around so I can hold it so that the way I like it. And I'm going to pick up two more beads, and I'm going to go into that second pink bead, and just the second pink bead, just like that. And I have two beads on my needle. And I'm going to pull. Now this is important. You got to make sure that they lay in that little triangle. Okay. Now I don't know if you can see that, but they sort of lay on a funky angle. And you got to make sure you're not all twisted up. Sometimes I there I put my um, thing down on top of it, and I can see that they're laying on a bit of an angle. So that's what they have to lay like as they go up. 
and then I'm going to peyote, continue to peyote. So now I have the first sticky peyote to go through. And this will work, this pattern will work with any size beads. So if you're using a bigger bead, um, you know, you're more than welcome to. It'll make a bigger square. It has to be in multiples of odd numbers. So the sides here have to be 5, 7, 9, 11, and it'll make a bigger square. And you can have two sizes, two sides of 5 and two sides of 7, um, and it would make a rectangle. Okay. So last one, we're coming to that corner again, and I'm just going to go through just the one bead, just like that. And pull it through. And then I'm going to pick up two beads for the corner again. And I'm going to come through the second one, just the one by itself. So basically the thread goes out of one and goes back in the next one. And I have my little two beads, if I can get them to lay right. And this first row of laying this herringbone in properly is the most persnickety of all of them. Okay, so the two of them are in there. So I'm going to peyote again, and I'm going to continue all the way around, and I'll show you how to do the step up. So this is what you're going to do all the way around. You're just going to put one in, one in each little hole. There's like a, a space here, and then a steppy up, an uppy, a, a pokey uppy. So lots of people call it different things, but it's the one sticking out. Okay. So you're going to go around one bead at a time. Just be patient with yourself. And it's kind of important that you keep medium tight to tight tension. Um, it doesn't have to be like killer tight, but you don't want it super loosey goosey because then the square won't have any stability when you're done. So I put the two in the corner again. If I can get it to sit right, it, and it always like spins around on me and causes me all kinds of hassles. There we go. It's pretty close. And you can stick your needle in there and force it to go the way you want it to. And it's not super critical. We can split them up later as we go through, but I'm going to continue to this corner here, and then I'll show you when I get to this. I'm going to put two in the corner here, and I'll come back, and I'll show you when there's a step up. Okay, so I put the last ones in the corner, and you can see how they're sitting. So, so far I have a single, a double, a double, right, in the corner, and now I'm going to do my step up. So I'm ready to put just do normal peyote, and I'm going to come into this bead here, and then I need to step up into the other bead. And sometimes you can do them both at once. And if you can, go for it. And I could. So there's the two. Sometimes you can't. If you can't, just do one at a time. And I don't know if you noticed, but the first time we stepped up was in this first one. And now we're stepping up in the second one. So your step up will move along this side as you go. So don't expect it to be in the exact same place. And if you look, it's more of a square now. Isn't that cool? All right, so let's keep going. And I'll show you one more corner. So I'm just peyoting again to get to the corner. Now, sometimes the tendency is this one here, because you can't see the white bead underneath it. It's this pink bead underneath it. You think, oh, I don't need to peyote there. I could just go straight from this bead into that bead. But you actually need to put a peyote, another white one in there before you go through the one bead in the corner. And it fills in that little space, OK? And then we put two more on for the herringbone. And we come back down the other side of the herringbone. So we're just coming through the one. And this second row, as you see, lays way better than the last one did. And it still looks twisted. Mine tend to twist. There we go. That's laying perfectly. Look at that. Do -do -do -do. See how they're laying? That's what you want. So just be patient. And you're going to go around. Don't forget that first one. You don't go straight to that sticky outy bead. You got to put that extra little one in there, and what that does is sort of covers that covers the sides of this this herringbone and extends it out. It actually makes more sticky uppies on each side in each pass you do. Okay, so you're going to go all the way around, and then you're going to step up, and we'll come back and we'll talk to you about the next row. Okay, so I thought I'd come back for the step up because it does. Um, Sometimes it can be hard to see. So I'm coming around and I'm getting ready to do a step up. And if I take a look at these rows here that I've completed, I have one, two, three, four, five white beads sticking up. Same with this side, same with this side. 
If I look at this side, I have one, two, three, I only have four. It means I'm missing something there. The other way you can tell too is that there's three beads here, two beads, three beads, oh, two, two, two. So I can tell I'm missing a bead in here. So when you do each row, you get beads on top of each other and they equal out. So I'm going to put another one in here because I have to do the one after I come out of my herringbone. Okay, and with the delicas you'll feel them pop in place. And then I can see that little hole there and it's tempting to just want to come straight over to the up bead, but that's not what you want to do. You want to come to this other bead just on the other side of that hole, just like that, and then you're going to step up. So it puts that in first and now I have one, two, three, four, five like I should have and I'm going to come up into the next one. Okay, and when you're working with um, seed beads uh, rather than delicas like uh, Mayuki's or Toho's, Toho's are a little square, so they're a lot more like delicas, so you're, you're going to be able to distinguish things a lot better. When you're working with seed beads, they're a little more rounded, so it's a little harder to see. So um, you can do all of the, p the pieces on the side of this uh, piece with Mayuki, uh, with delicas if you wish, but you don't have to. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next corner. Now, remember we were talking about how many doubles we have here? So I have one, two, three rows of double and one row of single. When I get to three rows of double on all of the corners, okay, three rows of double, so I got the tail thread is, so I got a problem with the thread here and I know it's my tail thread from the other side so I'm going to have to dig it out of there. But when we get um, three rows on every corner, then I'm ready to do my what I call my last row on the bottom okay so you got to three you're ready to do your last row so I'm gonna do normal peyote going to the corner and let's see what's going on with that tail thread okay so I'll come back when I get that tail thread sorted out Okay, so I'm ready to put that last bee in. I got that tail thread issue. I actually had to back out a couple of rows and go back again. So we have the three. So this time I'm going to only put one in the corner. Now, you can continue going as wide as you want, but I didn't want these to be, if you look at these, they're not terribly wide, and that's because I have to go around them. Um, so I didn't want them to be terribly wide. So this is as wide as I wanted them to be. For the space that's in the center, you know, that's as much as I wanted to go. Okay, so you're going to just put one in the corner, come down the other side of the purple, or the pink, I should say, and then I'm getting caught on the corner of my bead mat here. There we go. And as you can see, um, that's normal. Uh, any bead weaver will tell you that that's just part of the joys of being a bead weaver is met thread management thread and bead management okay so I'm almost at the next corner don't forget that one in the corner beside the pink because we don't want to forget that one I'm gonna come up to that one and this is normally where we put another herringbone but this time I'm only gonna put one of the contrasting colors and I'm gonna just come through the very next bead like that and it's just gonna sit sort of like capping it off like a pointy thing in the middle now you could just make these squares like this and use them flat for other things. They're kind of fun. Um, learning to make shapes is lots of fun. And I could also do just a plain peyote bracelet for this. Um, you know, a plain right angle weave bracelet. There's lots of uh, bracelets that I could incorporate uh, styles and I tried a several uh, styles and I decided um, to do something a little fancier to teach you guys a few more things. This will give you some basics. And having uh, the ability to make a toggle and clasp is always a good one. So I'm almost to the last one. Step up. Okay, when I get to the end, I will come back and then I'll show you what we, where we go next. Okay, so I've got all my four corners done, as you can see. And what I need to do is get to the center. We're going to start working on the center doing the second layer that's going to make it a double layered poofy thing. 
So it's kind of fun. So I didn't step up. As you can see, my, my needle's coming out of this uh, bead here. My thread, sorry, is coming out of that bead there. So I need to work my way back down. And I want to come out this bead here in that direction. So how can I do that? Well, you got to sort of follow along where you are. So I'm here right now, so I can't go back through that bead. It'll just undo the beads. So I'm going to go to the one beside it. And just the one beside it. And you can bend these beads at this point, especially with Delica's. Sometimes it helps. There's that one. And I'm going to come over back one this way. So I'm going to do two that time. See through there. And now if I come through this this way, I'm going in the right direction where I need to be. Yay. Okay, so you need to be coming out a bead. That first sticky outy past the one white uh, pink bead in the corner on one of the sides. Okay, so get there however you can, but that was the easiest way to get there. So now I'm going to pick up a white bead and I'm going to pass through the next sticky outy. So I'm, I'm basically peyoting on the inside. And I stick my thumb in there, you don't have to, but I'm going to do the second sticky outy. And this is a little bit more awkward. As you can see, I have to tilt and twist to get that pick that up. So I'm going through that second sticky outy. So this is what I have so far. And then I need one more to go into this corner because I have a, I have an indent here. See how I have an indent here? But I'm going to pass through this pink bead rather than doing anything in this corner on this round only. So I'm going to go through that first. That was that first round we put on. Remember I said keep it a little looser so you don't go crazy? Well, this is why. Okay, I'm going to go through that one there. And now I'm going to, I'm coming out of that pink bead. I'm just turning my square around. And now I'm going to go into that first. So it's coming out of the pink bead on this side. And I'm going to go through that first sticky outy on the inside here. Right there. So this whole round is just cream. Or the off white. Er Next to Coyote, and again, I have to. I'm doing a bit of a strange angle to get there, but it works. And when I don't have to be on camera, I just move my hands around. It's easy. Okay, next to Coyote. Okay, so now I'm at. I have my one, two, three sticky outies, and I'm at that weird corner one where there's an indent here. See how this sort of goes on a slant? Well, it should come back up again. So I'm going to take one and I'm going to put it through I'm going to go through the pink bead here I'm not adding any this time around and just get your needle in there just grab just the pink bead only okay and it's not so hard for me because I didn't do it super tight and I'm going to continue this all the way around and then I'll come back when I'm done this round and we'll go on to the next one okay so I'm just getting ready to finish this last round and um, I've just come out of the pink bead and I just have one bead left and I gotta put it in that spot there so I'm gonna come here and then I'm gonna step up so I'm just going on the diagonal through these two beads okay and if you look although they're starting to bend upwards which is fine because that's what we want them to do you have four sticky outies on each of the sides and if you have four sticky outies on each of the insides then you know you did it right see how there's four sticky outies on each of the insides perfect okay so we're ready to keep going so I'm gonna put a next bead on I'm peyoting still and I'm actually sticking my thumb against it and sort of pushing it towards a little bit nothing major just sort of supporting it to to start thinking about bending so this time I put two on and you can see I'm at that bead right beside the corner here and I don't have, I could go here, but then it would make it smaller again. So now I need to do two beads. So I'm going to do two of my contrast color again. So this one bead alone becomes the join position, and then we two beads, two beads, two beads. Got it? So any of you who have been doing this kind of stuff for a while, probably it's pretty easy. So I have two in the corner, and I'm going to go around and put two more in the next corner. So I'm putting on one, I 
make sure I got all of them I need to get. Yep. And then two in the corner. And I put two and then go to the next one, to the next peyote. Now this round's a lot harder because you have to watch these corners. You'll catch your thread on them more often than you think and sometimes I just, especially if you can't see, just stick your, you know, sort of needle and double check that there's nothing getting caught on those corners and you just be patient with it. Sometimes I stick my finger sort of like this over the corner and see that one would have gotten caught but it caught on my finger instead. So one, two, see that one got caught. I'm pretty sure, yep, there it is. See? And that happens, so especially on this in, this first couple of inside rows, you're going to get things caught a lot more. My tail thread's trying to act up too. No, not my tail thread, my main thread. So I'm back to the corner again, I need to put two more in the corner. Okay, so I'm going to finish up this last row and put two more in the last corner and continue around and then I'll come back when we're ready to do the next one. Okay, so I'm ready to do the step up and I just put the last two in the corner here and I can see on the side here, if you look on the side, so now it's starting to come up the side, so it's it's really hard to see from the top. So you, you, how can you tell, right? So just turn it to its side and you're going to see that you have this one, this one, and we're missing one right there. So I'm going to take that and we're going to put that through here and go up through that bead and then the next sticky outy. Okay, and that makes it easier. So now we have three sticky outies on every side. Okay, and if you have three sticky outies on every side, you've done it right. Okay, let's work our way to the corner again. And in this corner, we're going to do go through just one of the two, just like we did on the first layer that we did, just one of the two. And then we're going to do the two together and make that herringbone in the corner. Just go through the pink, just like that. So the two beads on the needle. And then we make the herringbone in the corner. And it looks like it's laying okay. So we do the next side and we keep going all the way around. All right. And you're going to do the step up and then you're going to do one more round. You want. See how there's a set of two and a set of two? Set of two, set of two. So you want three sets of two on every corner and have, have done the step up and then stop and come back to me. Okay, so I did the enough rows that I have three in, in each corner, three of the doubles in each corner and every one of them. And I didn't go to do the next row where you just put one in the corner. All of these have two, 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 two. See, there's two here. Not very tight, but there's two there. And then I'm doing my last one and I'm going to step up. So I'm going to come through that bead there. Put my last little sticky outie. And I'm going to come up through the next one so that I'm up top. I've stepped up. So on this row we have one, two, three, four, five. And on this row we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one more on the bottom row of sticky outies than we have on the top row. Okay? So then you know you've got to where you need to and you can see it's kind of like this little sandwich um, with beads. It's kind of cool, huh? So then we do, now we have to zip it up. The zipping is pretty easy except for in the corners you have to sort of think your way through it, okay? So I'm coming out of a sticky outie on this side and if you can see it sort of lines up with the down part here. So I'm going to go to the next sticky outy on the other side, to the right, and then I'm going to go to the left, and then I'm going to go to the right, find the next sticky outy. Okay, so now I'm at my corner. Alright, so you have the two from the herringbone and the one up here. So you're going to go through the first one of the herringbone on the left see it to get through it. Come on. There we go. The first one only. 
okay and then you're gonna go through the one that's by itself on the other on the right and then you're gonna go through the second part of the herringbone on the corner on this side now where do I go well I go to the lowest sticky outy which is this one here if I go back to my so you're just basically going right to left right to left and you're gonna do this all the way around and as you do this it zips it up so let me show you the other side the other sides zipped up this is all like you can't tell where it isn't and where it is we're gonna go all the way around and when you get all the way around come back to me and uh, we'll talk some more okay I thought I'd show you the corner one more time so I'm coming out of this last white sticky outy on the right I'm gonna go over to the first part of the herringbone on the left the first bead of the two and then I'm going to go through the single bead on the corner that we did on that last row that we did on the bottom one. And then I'm going to go through the second bead of the herringbone, just the second bead by itself, on the other side. And then we're going to come back to the cream beads again, to the lowest one on the right, and then on the left. And when you're using Delicas, you'll actually feel them click in place a little bit. They sort of pull over to each other. And they click in place okay keep going okay so I'm almost done and I wanted to stop for a second because I want to show you the sides that are zipped up the sides that are zipped up are let's see if I can get this, this is a focus come on baby you can do it there we go so the sides that are zipped up you can't really tell anything now this side isn't quite finished I'm on the last side I've done some of them but I haven't others and you see how it sort of sticks up more but you can also, if you can take your needle into a bead and do this and make the bead come away from the other beads, see how I can see that little opening now? That means I haven't finished yet. And the other thing is you can take your needle through the middle of the beads between the two sections and I can take my needle and do this. I can't do that here. If I stick my needle down in the middle, I can barely get it down in the middle. Okay, so that's how you know and you just finish it up. When you finish up uh, doing this, then you just need to weave in your ends. I already wove in my tail end and I will just quickly show you how to do that. I feel like I missed a bead and I want to make sure I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Because I usually feel them click and they didn't. So I always go one or two past it's, uh, just to make sure that I got them all so now I know I got them all. They all look smooth all the way along, everywhere on its sides. Everything's good and I have this beautiful little three-dimensional square that's awesome. So and now I'm just going to weave in and the, basically the easiest way to weave in is just you want to work your thread in a couple directions. And so I'm going to, coming out of that bead, I'm going to go to the, I'm coming out of this bead here. I'm going to go to the bead right beside it and I'm going to come down. I just want to go through one bead and that gets a little tougher when you have a stiff project but and I, but I give it a pull and then I'm going to come back up to the bead and maybe a, I'm going to try to do a couple on the diagonal ooh I got four on the diagonal on that one that was like a scary one okay so I'm going in the opposite direction and I'm going to pull until I, f I see the thread or feel it snap in and then I'm going to come back down the other direction again and I'm going to go a couple in the other direction so now my thread is, make sure it's not tucked around the corner there, it's tucked in nice and tight. I can go a little bit further if I want. The other thing you can do if you're really, really using a fine thread and you're really, really concerned and this is really hard to do because um, these delicate, with seed beads it's much easier but with delicate, with, with my Yuki's um, or other rounder beads, round seed beads, you can do it easier but you can get under a thread bridge between the rows. See how I can do that there? You don't have to do this. It's more than locked in enough. But if, if for those who love to knot, just put one single slip knot in there. And now I get to go back down the bead beside it. I'm just going to go through one bead only. And it, if it wants to get stuck on the next bead, I just push it, the next one down on my, on my thumbnail. And I pull and make sure that I can't see the thread on the top and I'm good so that knot, knot's tucked down inside so you're gonna have to make 
Now, if you look with the seed beads, they're just, it's just a slightly bit bigger with the 11 L seed beads than they are with the Delicas. You're going to have to make uh, three, four, four on one side and three on the other. So seven of these. So you're going to be making these little squares. You're going to get really good at them. But I, I am actually working on another project that I'm going to use this as the toggle to close it with. So now we're ready to move on to our next project. So we're going, I'm going to teach you some basic peyote that's going to enable you to um, make a toggle. So for this, for the, my one that I'm doing, I did a, a toggle um, strip and then I put it together. Uh, sorry, a peyote strip and put it together and made a toggle. And then I put some funky doodle ends on the end of it. I'm actually not liking this one. I'm going to tear it apart and make a new one. But I'll show you how to do a basic toggle. I'm going to show you how I normally um, peyote. And we're going to, again, start with the beads. And I'm just going to pick up some beads. So I need to have uh, 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I'm going to make this really simple. So there's my 14 beads. I have my long thread on my needle so I'm just pulling it down to near the end. Now I don't have a stopper bead, I don't have anything so this is how I normally do it. So I take it and I, I grab a hold of the thread, wrap this around my finger and then shove the beads on my finger. Okay so I got them shoved on my finger and I can keep pushing them down as I need be and if this isn't tight enough I can just pull it tighter or wrap it around another finger just to sort of really anchor it. Okay, so I want this nice and tight. So let me pull in a little bit tighter. Now, I suggest that until you've been peyoting for a while and you're really comfortable with it, that you always use a stopper bead, okay? Um, I don't bother. Just, I just find it annoying. But that's just me. But I've been, I don't know, I don't know how many years I have under my belt. So I picked up a bead, same color as the one I'm under and I'm going through the next bead. Now I just take it and I stick my thumb over top of the whole load and pull. And I get the little two beads beside each other with a single bead after that. See? And then I just pull, make sure my all well, my beads are coming down. And if it's giving me a hard time I can take it and re-put it in my fingers. So the big thing is that you need to have it coming over the top. Okay. The other thing is you can do this kind of thing too. Either one works. So put it in the next one. And I'm going to pull down so they're sitting beside each other. And I'm holding. And then I hold on to the beads I've already I've already completed, if that makes sense. Okay, push one down. Go into the next one. And when I pull, I'm pulling them so they sit beside each other. And then I move my finger up to cover what I've already done. And go through the next one. And this, uh, for me, is pretty simple. But, you know, I'm going slower here for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. But this is basically how I start my peyote. Uh, it means you need to have a little bit longer tail. Um, you know, there's a risk of the beads coming off. Now this is loosening off, so I'm just going to tighten it up. So... There we go. Make sure I'm still on the screen. And I've got a lot of length of thread here. I don't need this much, but I'm going to show you another thing after this. So, pink. And then I go through the last one. Uh, it's going to give me a hard time, of course, because I'm on camera. There we go. Okay. And this is where I tend to cheat. Um, <laughs> because I, I know I'm going to be sewing it up anyways um, into a tube. I just take it and make a knot on the top. Now the knot's not going to help the last bead from sliding. The, the last bead will actually slide over the knot. Just so you know. So don't like freak out when that happens. But it does bury the knot inside as I'm going. So. Okay, so I have this little strip now with where I'm coming out, and I just flip it over, hold on to the tail thread again, make sure this is all good, and I continue on. 
at this point once I do that bead in there this is not going to slip out anymore I don't have to worry about the tail thread the knots up inside of there now I'm gonna have to go past that knot when I'm doing the next um, when I'm sewing it together but it, this is only six pound fire line um, I'm not gonna have a problem I didn't do 40 knots in there I just did one and I'm actually gonna do another knot when I get to the top when I'm doing a quick toggle this is how I how I do it so I'm just peyoting peyote oh wow my mouse not working yeah doing peyote <laughs> oh lovely so this video has been shot over a few days just so you know um, as I've done different stages I realized I needed to teach you this or that so it's been it's been a journey you're gonna see it all you know little pieces here and there so now I pulled it all nice and tight everything's nice and straight I'm very happy with that so I'm gonna continue on with this pattern and if you count there's two beads on the top here and there's two beads on the bottom when I'm done my threads are going to be on opposite ends and there'll be six beads on the top and six beads on the bottom so that's what you want to make sure you have six beads on the top six beads on the bottom and your threads are coming out opposite ends because you'll get to the six bead point but your threads will be on the same end so you have to go down one last side so that your threads coming out the opposite end and when you get that done come back to me and we will go from there okay I'm back and as you can see let me just move these beads so it focuses I have six rows on six beads on the top so you can count them one two three four five six and six beads on the bottom one two three four five six and my threads are coming out opposite ends you and the reason I want to do that is because when I'm gonna fold this like a big taco burrito whatever burrito I guess you call it with and I usually put the the fold bottom edge to, towards me because it's easier so if you look at it Let's see if I can get a lot closer here if it'll focus. Let's do it sideways here. Okay. See how you have uh, this one that my thread's coming out is a down bead. And this one across from it is a sticky out bead. And then this one's a sticky out bead and then a down bead, a, a sticky out bead, a down, like as you go back and forth. So you have, they're opposite each other. If you look on each row, on this row here, let's pick this pink row. It's got a sticky out on one side and an innie on the other side so each row has one sticky out and one innie so when you fold it like a burrito then you can take your needle and put it through the sticky out -y. so I'm going from my right to my left and now I'm going to put it in the next sticky out on my right and this is called zippering and lots of people there's tons of videos out on this so I'm just going from left to right left to right left to right all the way across and basically essentially what I'm making is a tube right now it looks like a burrito but well I do that a lot thread management not my forte some days and today seems to be one of them okay let's turn this around get the tail thread out of the way holy moly I messed this up there we go see you're not alone <laughs> All of you out there who struggle and go, I can't do this. Yeah, I did that lots. I can't say I was born into this, because I wasn't. This was a craft that I learned through trial and error and lots of hard work and tons of mistakes. So, just know it's okay. I'm just going back and forth from right to left. Some people like to go through both, but with Delicas it's really hard. With the, with Mayuki rounds, it's wow see how I'm like flipping my work around everywhere today it's one of those days probably because I didn't wax this fire line bad me oops only one okay so I'm coming to the last two at the top here and I'm going to go through my last sticky outie and then I need to join them up. Well, guess what? My tail thread is across from it. Woohoo! So, another knot time. <laughs> All the purists out there are going, Oh my god, she can't believe she's doing this! You're not supposed to do that knot on the edge, it's horrible! I'm going to hide it so it doesn't really matter. Okay, one 
left over right, right over left, got the knot done. Okay? So I want to pull my knot to the bead that my tail thread was coming out of. And then I'm going to go back down that bead, and I'm going to yank, and my knot's going to go inside. And disappear. Isn't that lovely? Now my tail thread's a pain, and I can just get rid of it. I know, break it another rule. Rules are meant to be broken, and this, there we go. And for what I'm doing, it doesn't really matter, because I'm going to put some beads on the top, and it's going to cover everything in there anyways. Alright, so this is my favorite little, so now we have a nice little tube here, that somehow I got a thread caught. Look at that. I was doing it, hurrying too much. So, holy wow, did I ever get a thread caught? caught. It's all the way up the side. Look at this. All the way up the side. Let's pull. See if we can get this tightened. There we go. We pulled it. Tighter. Yay. Okay. So, um, this is my like favorite basic tube. And if you take a look at the square, which I embellished a bit, so just ignore the embellishment, it's just basically the same size, a little bit smaller than the square. The problem is, is that if you think about this as being the center point, if I pull this over to the center, See how it's short of the square and it could actually accidentally pop through? We don't want that to happen. So I need to add a few more beads. Now I could have paled the strip a little bit longer, but I like to make my ends not look like that. So I always have to add a few beads anyways. So I'm going to come up through, that's the last bead that we, it's the one beside the, the, where the thread's coming out. And now I can decide what I want to do. I'm going to pick up a pink, a white, a pink. Okay, so I have this on my needle. And then I'm going to come back down through the next seed bead beside it. And you're going to see it better once the pink's laying on top. Alright, and what you're going to have is like a little pico. Alright, I'm going to go through the next one. Whoa. These all lay nice. They make a nice little pointy thing. Let's see if I can get in just a little bit tighter so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Without being too crazy. Okay. So I'm coming out, my thread's coming out of here. Out of this white one. And I'm going to do pink, white, and pink. Okay. And I'm going to come back down the one beside it. Because there's three, they're going to sit, whoops, because there's three, they're going to sit like that with the white bead hanging out at the top. So if you wanted to have this to be blue, uh, white, and red, blue, white, and red, you could do that. You could do whatever color combina combination you want. And on mine, you're going to see I did it in the metallic color when I show you the finished product and how I put it together. So pink, white, pink. This is the last. So there's only six beads on the top, so I only have to do this three times. Go back down. And yeah, every time you come up on the one beside. Okay? So I'm going to come up on the one beside, just like that. And then I'm going to come up through that first pink one that I added. Okay? On that first set of See, I've got three little white nubbies, three little sets of picos as I go around. So now I'm going to play Ring Around the Rosie with my whites. Literally. I'm going to go around, and around she goes probably three times. So what it does is it pulls it together like a little nubby on the top. See what I'm doing? And I'm just, because this is only six pound test, it's going to need a few go arounds. Now you could put a bead in between each, a 15, and then do um, a 15 stacked on top of this bead, and then go around again. That's another way to do like a bead cap in. Um, maybe I'll do a video about that someday. Okay, so I'm going around and around, and I'm making myself happy. Once I think it's tight enough, and I'm happy enough about it, I'm done. So now I need to come back down. So, because I have to go to the other side and do the same thing. And what that added was that much more length on this side. Okay? 
So now I'm going to take it, put it back down, and right beside the white bead. Remember the, that trio of three beads with the white beads were there? And to come back down that, and when the next one in the, this is part of my toggle now that I put together. And I'm going to work my way, whatever way I can, following the thread path. I'm just going to work my way down the toggle to the other side. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Sometimes you can get two, most of the time you can't, not on a toggle. I don't know why. Oh, I got two, I got lucky. Whoops, I got two, I got lucky. What is with the focus today? Thank you. Okay. I think my camera doesn't like the cold weather. The colder my room seems to be, and my room is only 16 degrees right now. Because I've turned the heat off in a lot of places in the house. Although, it's April in Canada here. We had snow last week, so... It's still pretty cool um, in my work room, so I'm just working my way down. My work room is um, where I do my beading. It's pretty, uh, I like it to, that room to be fairly cool. I like it about 18, 19 degrees Celsius. For those of you uh, who are Americans, that's about, I don't know, um, 68 to 65 to 68. I don't like it um, warm. So I have the one end done, and it's closed off. And I don't, you know, have a ton of thread showing. I don't have this end of holes showing. So I'm happy with that. Now let's do the other end. The other end's the same thing. So I'm coming out of the bead. I work my way all the way to the end. So I'm coming out of that one white bead there with the thread. See it? And I'm going to pick up pink, the white, and that other white bead's hanging on for dear life. And a white. There we go. Back down the next one. So I'm just making a little pico edge, and then I'm going to come back up the next one in the row. It's kind of like uh, if you do herringbone where you go up and down, up and down, but one, white, pink. So I got pink, white, pink again. Back down the next one beside where my thread is. And it doesn't matter whether you do this to the right or to the left, it makes no difference. As long as you only putting your thread up or down each bead once um, for this round, you're good. Pink, white, pink. Back down again. Make sure I didn't get my thread caught on anything. That felt funny. Okay, so now I gotta come back up the white. And now we're ready to move on to the next. So I'm going to go up through the pink that's just above that white. So I have this the three picots on the end. That make, and the three little nubbies that are sticking up off the white beads. And I'm going to play a ring around the rosy again. Doo -doo -doo. So I'm just going around and around and around. These three beads till I feel that they're good and secure and tight enough. I mean, you could do it. With these delicate beads, I could probably go around ten times, but I don't want to do that because then I'd have this massive thread on the top. Okay, so once I get around and around and around, I'm coming back down the bead that's right beside where my thread's coming out. My thread's coming out that bead there. Coming straight back down. And when you're doing the whatever color you're deciding to be the very top three beads, pick it to be a color that's close to your thread color. Really not a good idea to have like black beads on the top when you're using white thread because you will see the thread. And then you work your way to the center to add this to a toggle. Okay, so if I have 14 beads, I'm not going to count these two ends that I made. So I'm going from the white strip to the white strip. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Seven and eight are my middle beads. Because there'll be six on one side, six on the other side, and two in the center. And yeah, they're a little offset of each other. But I would pick, like, let's say these two beads would be my center beads. That's rows seven and eight. If you're counting from one end. Right? Or either end, it doesn't matter. Seven and eight. And those would be the two on that angle that I would sew through when I'm putting on my other beads to connect it to my one of my squares okay so just remember that when I explain to you how to connect this you're gonna work your thread back and leave your thread attached to here to be able to attach it 
um, to your square. Okay, your last square. All right. So I'll come back. I got one more thing to show you. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is I got to show you how to make these little square strips that I use to connect the the pieces together. Help me to zoom out here. Maybe I could do it a little easier on my on my thing. So I need to show you how to do this square stitch strips that I actually just sewn like a big tube around the squares that I made. Remember I told you I need to make seven squares. So I need to make these and these ones here have 19 rows, uh, sorry, 18 rows in them. Um, so each, each strip down is one row. So they have 18 rows in them. And I'm going to show you how to do them, how to do a square strip, a little strip like this that you can, square stitch strip, so that you can um, do it this way. So I'm going to sh show you, like, there's my, I just have to attach this. I'm going to show you on screen how to attach this last one. But I have them all attached together here. So I have my bezel that I made in video two, three, and... Um, I'm going to teach you how to make these. I showed you how to make the squares earlier in this video, and I showed you how to make the toggle. And remember the toggle I said comes out the middle? So all I did was put on a number of beads, a center bead, a number of beads, and there's three beads. Let's move this stuff out of the background. Let's see if I can get my needle to point. This is black. That's why I didn't show you this on the video. So see these three beads here? One, two, three. They were the middle of my toggle. I, if I counted my sticky outies on the side here, I had um, six, so number th uh, three and four of the six were, you can actually almost see it, there's one, two, there's three, four, five, six sticky outies um, that was sort of attached to, so I picked four and then I went through the one that was below that and back out. Uh, sorry, three and four as the ones I attached it to, so that it centered it on the toggle. So I came out of the two center beads on that angle, I actually put five beads on here. One bead, five beads. And I like my toggles fairly long so they're easier to maneuver into the squares. And because I have this other beading on the squares, it's there's less space in the center. So I wanted to give myself a little bit of extra space. Went through those three, back up, back through the center, added more beads, stitched back through those two, and I reinforced it three times. So I went around and around and around. And then I wove my thread into the toggle so that it was secure and ended my thread. Okay, so that's how you attach your toggle. Remember those two beads I just showed you? That's how you attach it to your square. So you take one of your squares and put it on. All right, so this is my strip that I just made. So this has got the green, the black, then the bronze, then the black, then the green. Okay, so it doesn't really matter um, what order you want to put yours in, or you could attach your two squares together. I'll show you these two squares. You could attach them together some other way, um, going from one to the other with maybe one of these fire polished in between. Um, there's lots of different ways you could have done it. This is the way I decided to do it. Um, you know, your imagination is the only thing that limits you. So as I, I say all the time, so have fun. Um, create whatever you'd like. So I'm just getting my stuff ready. <laughs> So I'm going to just pick up beads. Um, let's do to do white with a pink in the middle. Just so it can... No, let's do it the other way because the white's a little harder to see. Uh, let's do pink, white, pink, white, pink. So I, it's the five beads. Now I need to zoom in. Okay, so I have my five beads on my needle. I'm going to bring them down my needle. And again, I'm bad. I don't use stopper beads. Please use stopper beads. If you haven't been beading for like 15 years, or you're really, really comfortable with a certain way of doing things, use a stopper bead. I just stick my thread in my hand and grab a hold of it, and wrap it around fingers, and I push my beads up against my finger and pull the thread, the thread really tight so they're snug up in there. If you're not comfortable with that, use the stopper bead. The stopper bead would be up here. That's my tail thread. There's my needle with my thread. So with this one, you're going to pick up the same color bead that you're going to go into. Okay? And I'm going to 
I'm coming down, my thread's coming out of the bead down this way, and I'm going to come back up to the top, just the one bead, and there, there we go. Stop looking at the camera. There we go. And I'm going to come around and make a circle. So what happens is you get like this little laddery thing. Um, if you're doing a ladder stitch, you would continue on making more and more. And I'm going to come back up the ladder. So this is what I have. Wow. I think my camera likes it this close. Maybe it's this other light. I think when I have the other light on, it makes my focus go wacky doodle. There we go. Okay, so that's the two beads there. So now I have four more to do. Now, a lot of people do this square stitch in a way where they have to do some reinforcing stuff. Uh, yeah, I know. You know me. Shortcut, I know how to find it. <laughs> and my stuff's still really great. And that's what I care about is that the stuff is really sturdy and strong. So I picked up a white bead because I'm going to go through the white bead. And a lot of people just go through the white bead and do like a, you know, like a laddering stitch beside it. I'm not going to. I'm going to go through the two beads. Do, 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 all the way through the two. And I'm holding on to my finger over top of everything. I know you can't see. And I know there's somebody screaming out there. I can't see. So what I've done is I brought my thread down. A big fat finger over top. I brought my thread down this way. And then I'm, I'm going to now my thread's still at the bottom. I'm going to bring it back up between the, in these two beads. So I'm just holding my thread to keep everything sort of, and then I stick my thumb over top to pull back up. So that it keeps everything where I want it to be. Because these first couple of rows are a little hard. Okay. So now I pull my beads back down where I want them again. So now I got a pink bead. So I'm going to pick the pink bead up and I'm going to go down two beads. I'm not going to go down three. I'm just going to go down two. All right. And I'm going to come over. Oops. I'm actually bringing my thread over first so I can still hang on. And there, it, I know my thread's in where I need it to be. And then I got them pinched between my fingers, but not so much that I can't get my needle in there. And then I'm going to go up those two beads. And this one's being, there we go. I'm going to go up those two beads. The one underneath is there. And I'm going to pull straight up. And the reason I'm pulling straight up is because I want them to snug each other if you pull out, it'll snug away from each other, and that's not good. Pull down the next bead. It's a white one. Woo! Okay, white one. I'm going to go in to two beads. See how I stuck my thumb underneath? That allowed me to take my needle and sort of torque it a little bit, and it pulled that bead up. Okay. Do -do -do -do. And I'm going to go up two beads. And I have one more bead hanging out on my thread that I had to grab, which is the pink one. I'm gonna go down two beads. Oop, stick your finger over top of everything. Okay. So my needle's coming out on this side because I just stuck it down. And I'm gonna go up the two beads. Wow. There we go. Alright. Again, I cheat. <laughs> this is, I, you don't have to at this point because this a square stitch is pretty pretty sturdy. But I tie a knot off and I tie the knot on towards this side. And the reason is because this is going to be my end. I'm going to have to stitch through again to sew the two ends together. Okay, so I don't want my knot to be in the way. So I'm going to tie the knot on this side. I know I'm a bad girl. I tie knots on the outside when I shouldn't. But you never see my knots because I pull them in. Okay, so right over left, and left over right, I'm just tying a knot, so if I was out further, you could actually see what my fingers were doing, but I'm just tying a knot. Okay, and I want the knot to come towards the one side, so as I tie the knot, as I tighten the knot, I'm pulling it towards the one seed bead, almost to the outside of the row that I'm working on. See the knot? See the knot? Yay! Okay. Gonna flip everything. Do 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 do. Actually, I'm not gonna flip everything. I lied. So this is where I go through this this row and this row only. I'm reinforcing. This is the traditional way you go through. I just pulled that knot inside. It disappeared. Look, it's gone. 
And then I'm going to come back out here. And then I'm going to come back down here. So I know I'm flipping all over the place and you're probably going, what the hell? So there's my tail thread side, right? And my knot's in this second tube here. Right, so that's right. I'm good. My knot's actually hiding in here. Okay, so now I'm going to do another row. And I'm just going to go down one bead for the first one with the same color bead. If you're doing rows of the same color, again, it's whatever's underneath. It's kind of a, if you're doing, you know, stripes like this. Go up, pick up a white one. Go down two. And with these delicas, it's a lot harder because you have to sort of dig your needle in a little bit there. Go up two, pull straight up, pull straight up. So it tightens it the right way. Okay, pink one. I'm going to go down two. Now, when it's small like this, going down two and you're thinking, delicate beads, holy crap, how am I going to do that? See how I'm taking my nail and I'm just sort of shoving it there? I make sure I'm in this pink one. So I'm sort of coming from behind. And as soon as I see the tip of my needle, I know I'm good. And I, I can torque it a little bit. And that's how I, once you get through a few rows, it's easier, but that's sort of my habit. And if you're not sure where the thread has to go, you can sort of pull it straight across from where it's coming out of this bead, and it goes into that one. And I go over two. And all you purists have turned out of my channel, and I'm never going to watch it again. But that's okay. Because I break all the rules. Down two beads, and see how I'm sticking my thumb underneath? To sort of, I'm taking the... The idea is I want to take this and I'm, as I get my needle to where it needs to go, I, I want to bend the, all the beadwork sort of to take it so I can get my needle out, especially with delicates, because they, they snug up so tightly to each other. With seed beads, you don't have to bend it as much with my UT rounds. Okay, pull it straight up. I didn't that time and I could see the difference. And one more pink. Okay, so I should run into a knot, and I can feel it. That's okay. I can get around it. There we go. Da 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 da. Okay, so normally you would go back down the first side and then back up the second side and start again. I don't, and I don't know if you can tell, but my beads are on there really good. They're not loose at all, and because I'm get because I'm going down two each time. I am causing a tighter thread weave to happen inside, and they are sturdy as heck. They're not going anywhere. I also have less, um, less chance of jamming up holes or breaking beads, especially if I want to do anything else with this. Um, I have, you know, less threads on the top end. I only have the two on each on either side, so I don't have, you know, a ton of, of uh, thread hanging out everywhere. So if I want to do, you know, let's say I wanted to do some brick stitch on the edge of this, I could do that, or some other stitch, or a pico edge, or whatever. I have options. So um, this is the way I do it. Now you're going to do this. You're going to these. This is three rows: one, two, and three. You're going to continue to do this, and it's pretty pretty thread thirsty. I would say, you know, a good three quarters of a wingspan. Um, and that would give you enough to sew it together too, and maybe not quite that much, but pretty close. Okay, so now I'm going to show you on the, the real one. So here's the real one. I'm coming out of the last one. And as you can see, this is like, it's tough. Square stitch is a really tough stitch um, because of all the reinforcing going back and around and around. It does take a bit of time. And this is with seed beads. And as you can see, they're not all perfectly even and perfectly you know, stacked together, um, you can see space between them a little bit, like see how you can manipulate them and sort of see them more? Um, that's what happens. That's the difference. Okay, so now I'm going to take two of my squares, and I'm going to hold them together, and I'm going to stick my piece, my... Actually, I'm going to stick it together the other way. It doesn't really matter. There's no right or... There's no wrong side or right side to this. I just want the thread to be on the bottom. And I'm holding on to the whole bracelet because I've already put everything else together. Much easier if I showed you to do this with just the two. Okay, so I have the two sandwiched in here. I want to bring the two ends where I can sort of work on them. 
So I have the two ends like this. My thread's coming out of this bottom one here on this side. And it's going to be harder to see because of the black, and I'm sorry. Okay? But I'm going to come up through the next one. Just the one bead. It's kind of like starting the zippering pattern, and I'm going to come back down through the first bead again that I started with. I'm going to go back up this time, and I'm going to go back up two beads. That wants to go three. Two beads. I'm up two beads. And I'm going to come back down two beads on the other side. And this time I'm going to go up three beads. So I'm going to the gold one. It's getting a little snug in there. And I'm going to come back down two beads. Not three, two this time. And there's one, two. Just trying to get it to come out between the... There we go. So I just caught the first two beads. And then I'm going to start on the second bead here this time. And that's the bead that's really tight, I'm sure of it. So I'm just trying to get my needle in there. And I'm going to go up. Uh, maybe. Come on. There we go. Uh, almost there. It's catching on that last bead, so I'm just trying to get it around that last bead. Okay, it wants to catch on the last bead. We'll go through the last bead and we'll back, back in last bead. You can always do that. Don't like... It's not so great to do that with like Nymo because you'll li likely to split your thread but... Okay. Down two beads. And then up three beads. Gotta get under that gold one. So I'm maneuvering my hands to get me there. Let me do this one more time. Yay, I went through all three. I'm still just got the two squares hanging out. One's here, and the other one's here. They're just hanging out. And I'm going to come back down two. Now, there's a lot of thread in here. If you need to switch to a size uh, 12 needle, uh, don't hesitate. Um, just for this stitching these two together because it's really really important I feel like I sewed myself into the there I did somewhere I sewed myself I sewed myself to the corner to see the thread so now I gotta figure out where that's coming from and this stitch does not pull through easily okay so we're gonna hide that I'm gonna teach you how to do that too I guess another lesson No, I'm not back out. Not at this point. Okay, I'm going to take that loop. That little tiny loop that's at the corner of the top that I got caught. And I want to get it out of the way now. Since I'm on the last bead, I'm going to take... I made a knot. Oh, look at that. Around that. I go down one. And pull the knot inside. And it pulls the thread inside. And back up. Phew! It's sewed together. Now I just need to, I'm just going to go back up and down a couple of rows. And with the Delicas, I wouldn't do it. But with, uh, maybe not going that way. Which way am I going? That's better. See, so I just went down a whole row. And I'm going to go back up a whole row. Get a couple of rows away from everything. That I just, I'm just, I'm actually turning the rows around like a little... I don't marry go around. So now I'm going to come down a couple of beads. And usually I like to do it so it comes next to a black bead. So if I can come out after the gold one there, I'd be really happy. I'm trying to get it to come out. Now oh, that'll work. So I'm coming down a couple of beads. Now what am I catching on? Today should not have been a filming day. Ah, oh, good grief. Okay. <laughs> we all have these days. So the difference is, is that you get to see me have these days because I have to film because you guys want your videos. And you get really mad at me when I don't post them on time. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah, whatever. So now I need to make a knot. 
there's threads underneath here. There's like a bazillion threads underneath each one of these rows. Remember, I've gone around and around and around and around between each of these beads. Try to not to get all of the threads, but try to get a couple of the threads. Here we go. I got a couple of threads. I'm sticking my through the threads. I get to take my needle through once. Take my needle through a second time. This is called the surgeon's knot. And I'm going to pull really tight. And now I'm going to find my way back down the rest of that row. Now at this point, I'm happy. I can cut off my thread. I've gone a couple of different directions. Now I don't want to cut my thread off at the end of a row, so I'm going to just bring it up wherever in the middle. And I'm going to cut my thread off. Let me back out now. Well, wait. Oh, yep. Okay, ready to cut my thread off. And I just, as I said, I always like to cut my thread with tension, so I put my nippers with my thread, and I'm pulling my thread, and I'm cutting. Ta-da! Finished my bracelet. I ended up only needing six to fit properly. So everything's finished. Yay! I put on the strips, as you've seen. Um, this little piece, I didn't explain it, but it's just 12 of the same strip. I sewed it together and then sewed it to the um, in and out of the beads, in and out of these beads across here. You know, in and out, in and out, in and out, um, to reinforce it as much as I could. Just like kind of like sewing on a, a button or a strip. And the same thing with this one. It's just the 12. I have the toggle on one end and the other square on the other end becomes the place where I do it up. So you have, it looks like this when it's done up. And then you have this on the front. And it's really comfortable. Let me show it on your wrist. Okay, so I'm putting it here. I'm taking a hold of the... I'm doing this up by myself. Which is always fun. Never good at that. Sticking the toggle end in. Grabbing the toggle end. Pulling it up. Through the loop. Ugh. See, I'm not coordinated. But that's okay. It's done up. Look, there's the, the toggle laying across the square. There's the, the front. It fits me perfectly. Here's the one I did last week. With a different look. With a, it done on the other way. And you could put this one the other way too. If you want to lengthen it or whatever, you can actually put more beads between uh, on these strips and make these come farther apart. Um, a couple more beads on each one would add you a half an inch, probably. Um, finished bracelet size. That's always a question people come up with. What size is this bracelet? Okay. Let me get a ruler. I have to get off screen to get a ruler here. So from... Well, the toggle, I only count the toggle from the cross part because this part comes in and it takes away part of the length on this too. So this is just over a seven and a half inch bracelet. Just over. Because there's seven and a half there, so it's just over seven and a half inches. So with a little bit of wiggle room to get the toggle on. So that's this bracelet and this bracelet's the same. With the way the clasp does up, seven and a half inch bracelet. See? To the middle because this toggle sort of goes through and it, when it goes through it takes away this whole end section of this of this bead so when you're figuring it out okay so this is six I told you to make seven in the beginning you only need to make six so you're good so um, yeah take care keep on making from Manny's Makings and enjoy enjoy these projects I hope you um, come up with some new and creative ideas and if you do don't hesitate to share them to friend me on, on Facebook uh, the links below under the show more along with all the list of ingredients and um, once you friend me you're more than welcome to share a picture on my page that's the, that Facebook page I don't use for any personal stuff I just use it for Manny's making so um, yeah enjoy and take care and keep on making bye bye